developed an extremely intuitive software platform. Uh, it uses data from our own unique sensors, combines that with other data sets or sensors uh, if available and if we can get those data sets. Um, and then the platform uses analytics, machine learning technologies to drive data center optimization activities to, I mean, ultimately it delivers three benefits, a combination of usually all three, but certainly at least two of remove risk, save energy, release capacity. So ultimately everything we deliver and we support our partners with and customers with, it's always risk energy and capacity in some form. As we briefly touched on um, when we were looking at the polling results, for today's webinar, we're largely focusing on the optimization and cooling capabilities, thermal capabilities of the software. But it, it is also worth mentioning that the software has extensive m and &E capacity management, uh, power management and operational functionality. Um, it's not the focus of today's webinar, but we can uh, please follow up with SCTI uh, as required if that's of interest. Um, so focusing on the optimization and cooling elements of the software, it, it was interesting to see those polling results and, and as I say, just tie up very nicely with uh, the demonstration we're about to show you, but we can also help with some of the, uh, the, the slightly lesser important and the polling results. Um, I'm probably preaching to the converted on this webinar, but our software helps address very well documented uh, challenges in the data center, thermal risk, energy consumption, capacity management. And from the uh, analysis and data across hundreds and hundreds of engagements that, uh, that, that we've worked on, we typically see that there's a, a huge over-provision of cooling. So Arnold mentioned this in his slides. Uh, we, we typically see average cooling utilization, despite most cooling, all cooling units being on and, and, and working uh, flat out or, or switched on, we typically see cooling utilization at around about 38%. Um, cooling is obviously a huge consumer of energy, uh, typically quoted at 35% in most reference guides, but we often find that the true figure is much higher. And interesting, again, just in terms of risk, there is always at least one or two areas of very, very high risk that we see when we look at all the data. And typically we see at least 15% of racks are outside of typical ASH rate guidelines uh, for inlet temperatures. And also, again, pointing back to risk. A third, roughly a third of all unplanned outages are, are down to some kind of thermal stroke cooling issue. These challenges that are typically the main drivers for engaging with EchoSend, in addition to some other slightly less tangible benefits, such as uh, corporate carbon reduction initiatives, simplified capacity management, and, and certainly in these times, uh, so never, never great to, uh, to, to provide a service in these times, but the remote visibility in, in a COVID world, we've seen a lot of engagement where customers have been unable to or, or partners have been unable to get access to sites or they just need additional remote visibility so that, that also drives quite a bit of engagement at the moment uh, and that consistent management and visibility across the state is also a, just that, that final point on that slide it, it's interesting that i saw an internal stat very recently from our software team that we are processing about 50 million software data points on a daily basis at the moment 